Hey, shalom. Most high in Christ bless you all. You know what day it is. That's right. It's Shout Out Tuesday. It's Shout Out Tuesday. Now, we're going to cover a few things today. We're going to cover a few things today. Um, first, before we begin, or no, let me begin by saying this. Satan cannot and will not do anything the Most High God does not allow him. Let me say it again. Let me say it one more again. The spiritual demon Satan cannot and will not do anything that is not allowed by the Most High God. That's right, I said it. So that myth of God and Satan had a fight and God knocked the devil out of heaven. Devil took a whole bunch of angels with him and then it came down to the earth and crash landed. That's Greek mythology. That is Greek mythology. It never happened. Satan is under direct orders from God. Understand that. Satan does what God allows. I'm going to prove it. I want all of y'all to follow me along in the book of Job, chapter 1. Job, chapter 1. We're going to, oh, we're going to read is verse 6. It reads, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. So, Satan came up to heaven. So, you know, it's funny because people say, or not say, I won't say people. No, I might as well say people because people say the dumb things that white Christians taught us in slavery that uh, Satan's other name, his real name is Lucifer, and he was cast down from heaven. Then he says, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. That's talking about the white man in space travel. Isaiah 14, when you read 12 down, you can read the whole chapter. Is talking about the white man being called Babylon, being called Lucifer. That's a that's a metaphor for them. So now the spiritual demon Satan, it tells you here that there came a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, uh, and Satan came also among them. Let's see, did God go, hey, what you doing up here, Satan? Didn't I kick you out a millennium ago? You ain't supposed to be up here. Let's see, verse 7. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth, and from walking up and down in it. Hmm. Why didn't God just lose his mind? You're not supposed to be on the What are you doing? What's going on? You Christians are insane with that myth Greek mythology y'all follow. So now watch this. Let's go to chapter 2. And verse four and five. So now let me let me give you a quick rundown. Uh, the Lord says to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Now I'm gonna just read verse four and five. All this is gonna lead into coronavirus, COVID-19 in other names, in other words. Watch this, Job chapter two, verse four and five. And it says, uh, and Satan answered the Lord because the Lord said, have you considered my servant Job? He's a perfect man, upright. Verse four, and Satan answered the Lord and said, skin for skin, yea, and all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh and he will curse thee to thy face. That's what Satan said to the Lord. He said, touch him, skin for skin. What did he say again? Touch his bone and his flesh, he will curse thee to thy face. Skin for skin, yea, and all that a man has for him his life. And when you read on, the Lord said unto Satan, behold, he is in thine hand, but save his life. Don't kill him, but you can do whatever you want to him. Now that should let you Christians go, hmm, hmm, hmm. I know when I, under, when I learned this, it made me understand that Christianity is a false religion based on colonialism, white supremacy. So now, my point of all this is that Satan goes before the Lord and the Lord and him are having a conversation. And the Lord says, he's in your hands, just don't take his life. But skin for skin, touch his bone, touch whatever, touch his life, but don't take his life. Satan plagued Job. He plagued Job. So, uh, verse seven. So, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his feet unto his crown. So he took, what did he do? He plagued Job. He, he sent pestilence upon Job. Okay. Job's health was in the decline. So, 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 so. 
I want to show you all. I I I, stum I didn't stumble. I looked. I wanted to really see what he was saying. I saw a video this morning by our brother, T.D. Jakes, and he said something about the coronavirus. We, we here in Israel, we call it Rona. He says something about Rona and listen to what he says. Every day, we've lost people I knew. We've lost a lot of people I knew. We've lost a lot of preachers. We've lost a lot of entertainers. We've lost a lot of people. People of color are especially susceptible. Elderly people are especially susceptible. Um, people with pre-existing uh, health conditions are especially susceptible. So, all right. So T.D. Jakes acknowledges that for some unknown reason to him, the Rona coronavirus, also called COVID-19, for some reason in particular, smites down people of color, meaning blacks and Latinos. It ain't really hitting white folks. Hmm. I thought God doesn't discriminate according to Christianity. According to Christianity, God does not discriminate. Let me tell y'all something. I showed y'all during the Sabbath class how the coronavirus initially was only getting Caucasians and then Something happened in a lab. It was tweaked and began to smite down blacks and Hispanics. Now, all these things, the Lord is, listen to my wording, the Lord is allowing it to happen. God is allowing it to happen. Now, you might say to yourself, that makes no sense. Why would God allow people to die or be afflicted by COVID-19? The Rona. Let me help you out here. What I'm about to share with you, you may not know that you Christians and T.D. Jakes, he may have heard it, but he rejects it in his sermons and his teachings. But I'm going to help you out. I'm going to reveal to you a secret about blacks and Latinos, Native American Indians as well. Guess what? We are the children of Israel. We are the Israelites, the Bible speaks. That's right. We are the Israelites, the Bible speaks of. I know you thought we wasn't nothing. I know you thought we was nothing but niggas and speaks Gentiles. We might live like Gentiles. We might, we might have been colonized and mislabeled by Gentile names such as African American, Puerto Rican, Haitian, Jamaican, Dominican, Mexican. Those are Gentile names and we have lived Gentile lives. So hence the New Testament does call us Gentiles that Paul went to. But guess what? Lo and behold, we are more than we have become here in this society. We are the children of Israel, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why are we lost? We lost our identities. We've lost our cotton picking minds here in Babylon the Great. Let's go on though, let's go on. Let me go to Leviticus 26, watch this. Leviticus 26. Y'all follow along, follow along. Come on. Leviticus, the 26th chapter. And we are going to read the 21st verse. This is Moses, Moses speaking to the 12 tribes. Watch this. And if you will walk contrary unto me and will not hearken unto me, I will bring seven times more plagues upon you according to your sins. So what was the Lord telling Moses to tell us, the 12 tribes of Israel? If we walk opposite to his commandments, I'm going to sing plague. I'm going to send plagues on you. That's what he said. Is that the word? Yes. Plagues. Another word for plagues is pestilence. Another word for pestilence is disease. Another word for disease is sickness upon the 12, 12 tribes of Israel for breaking God's commandments. Let's go on over now to Deuteronomy 28. Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to start at verse 15. Watch this. Do not mean oh, all you Israelites, y'all know where I'm going. I'm preaching to the choir with y'all. But this message is so our brothers and sisters lost in Christianity, lost in Islam. Watch this. Verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Watch this, watch this. I'm going to jump down to verse 32. Thy, this is some of the curses. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. 
Thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand. You would accept a note. Please, of course, sir, from you, do not divide my family. Do not take me unless you take my children. Liza, quiet! You will have the most faithful slave of me, the most Liza. faithful slave that has ever lived, but I beg that you Your do not separate the boy. us. Please. Stop it. I will give you something God, to cry about. Please. Randolph, come forward. Come, 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 come. Now, you see how fit this boy is. Mm? Like ripe fruit. May I take your stick a moment? Observe this, Randall. Jump, 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 run, run. Very good. Higher. Do you see this? Very, very likely. He will grow into a fine beast. Uh. No military might, no financial might, no political might to regather the 12 tribes of Israel that was scattered, okay? Taken from the uh, continent of Africa, from Israel, we went into Africa. From Africa, we were sent to North America, Central America, South America, Canada, Europe, all over, Iran, Iraq, during the sub-Saharan slave trade, Persia. Watch this, uh, verse 48. Therefore shalt thou serve thine enemies, which the Lord shall send against thee, in hunger and in thirst and in nakedness and in want of all things. And he, your enemy, shall put a yoke of iron upon thy neck, until he have destroyed thee. Did that happen to us? You better believe it did. Now watch this, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. The word Egypt, listen good. The word Egypt, listen, means captivity. The word Egypt means captivity. Wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Cause I know right now there's a Christian going, how you know that? How, how does he know that? Yeah. Exodus 20, verse two. I am the Lord thy God which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Egypt is synonymous for house of bondage. In other words, slavery. Bondage means slavery, means captivity. Okay, so let's read Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. One more again. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. What does Egypt mean? Bondage, captivity, slavery. Again, with ships. How do we get into the Americas? With what? Ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. We wouldn't see our homeland nor our identity again. And there, meaning once we got off those slave ships, those cargo slave ships, uh, and there you shall be sold unto your enemies, plural, enemies, for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you meaning no man shall redeem us from the curses God put on us. So who were the enemies we were sold to? The Portuguese, the Dutch, the Spanish, the French, okay? The Italians, uh, who else? German, I said German already, British, America, don't, can never forget America. Those are the enemies the Bible is speaking of. Now watch this, verse 61. What would happen to us after we were sold into slavery? Watch this next precept in verse 21. And also, it says, also, also every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, then will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. Is Rona, I mean, coronavirus, is Corona, COVID-19, written in the Holy Bible? Can I open the Bible and read the words coronavirus? No. So that's what it's talking about. Verse 61 again. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee until thou be destroyed. So, Brother T.D. Jakes, my brother, this is why this um, plague, this pestilence is attacking people of color opposed to all other races on earth because we are the children of Israel. Now, Watch this. Follow me. Let's go to Hosea, Hosea 5.15. The book of Hosea, chapter 5 and verse 15. Watch this. It reads, I will go. This is the Lord. I will go and return to my place till they, the they is the Israelites, acknowledge their offense. What is our offense? We have broken the commandments of God. Deuteronomy 20.15. Did you forget that quickly? Let's read it again. I will go and return to my place till, till meaning until they, meaning the 12 tribes of Israel, which we are, which we are, which we is, till they acknowledge their offense. What is our offense? We've broken 
We have broken the commandments as we do to this day till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. How do we seek God's face? Reading the Bible, learning the Bible from those knowledgeable in this truth that we are the children of Israel. We can explain why we went into slavery and remain here to this day because we broke the commandments and reject the, the, we reject the words of Christ. We, re we reject Christ, the black Messiah, as our savior. We say, no, Christ is a white man who loves everybody. He doesn't discriminate. Although he says in Matthew 15, 24, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Christ was wrong. He didn't know what he was talking about. That's what Christianity says. That's the message you put forth and you're all wrong. Christ, he knows exactly what he said. When he said he's not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel, he meant what he said. John 3, 16, when he says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Do you know who that world is? The world of the Israelites. You can read it in Isaiah 45, 17. The Israelites is the world without end. We are the world God loves. Now, let me get back. You know, I, you know, I digress. Let's read it again. Hosea 5, 15. So we being plagued here in Babylon the Great. We being plagued here in America, in Europe. Okay, watch this. Again, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction. In their affliction. What's our affliction right now? Rona, COVID-19, the coronavirus. That's a part of this affliction. In their affliction, they will seek me early. So there is a divine purpose behind these plagues. We just got to look at it and understand it spiritually. Why is God allowing Corona, COVID-19, to affect people of color like no other? Because we're the children of Israel. Okay, watch this. Now I'm going to hip y'all with something. I'm going to hip y'all with something. Let me look, be, be, let me, let, let me look at something real quick. Let me look. Uh, two, three, four, five, six... I'm going to show y'all an article. I'm going to show you an article. Because we, it looks like we've come through it. The majority of them come through. I got hit with it. Oh, I'm, I'm, well, I, oh I think I did. Uh, the brother said, hey, your spirit left your body and left the room. So in other words, yes, I died and the Lord brought me back for a reason such as now. But I'm going to show you an article right now. Take a look. The article is from Market Watch. It reads, can the United States handle the second wave of COVID-19 coming our way? May 4th, 2020, 2.17 p.m. Eastern Time. We're failing to reduce the number of coronavirus infections before the next peak hits. Cambridge, Massachusetts. Like surfers looking out for the next big break breaker before the first one has passed, epidemiologists, I don't know if I said it right, and public health officials in the United States are bracing themselves for a fresh surge of COVID-19 infections later this year. The fear is that this second wave will coincide with the peak of the 2020 to 21 United States US influenza season, triggering a new flood of hospital patients in dire need of respiratory support. The fear is justified based on what we know about coronaviruses and influenza, for both infections begin rising in November and peak at some point in December, January, or February before subsiding by April. You read it for yourselves. You read it for yourselves. I ain't making nothing up. A second wave, a second wave. Let me tell you something. I, I'm still regards to the second wave of the virus. It's like if you knew a thief or a robber was coming to your house tonight, or let's say tomorrow or next week, wouldn't you prepare yourself to have this thief, robber, or killer taken care of? You prepare yourself for it. You go and get him or her before they get you. you in other words, you prepare yourself for it. So likewise, we would be dumber than an ox and an ass for us to know that a second wave is coming and us not to prepare our mind, bodies, and souls for this. Y'all see a lot of people's dying, whether it's of COVID-19 or not. I'm not arguing about 
I know they're changing the uh, death certificates and all that. I do know that. I do know that. But watch this. Y'all remember in 1 Timothy 4 verse 8 where it says bodily exercise profits little? Now it doesn't say profits nothing. It says profits little. It says but godliness profiteth with all. But God, I'm not reading it, so I'm going off the top. But godliness profits with all. Something like that. Meaning the scriptures benefit our soul, our spirit on a greater level than physical, our physical strength. So, but the two go hand in hand. That's why Paul put it in 1 Timothy 4 and 8. You cannot ignore one without the other. If you ignore your physical strength, which is your health, you also will ignore your spiritual. What do I mean by that? If the two work together, right? Spirit and body work together. If the spirit breaks down, the body falls in time. If the body is broken down, eventually the spirit breaks down also. Watch this. I'm going to go to Ecclesiastes chapter 30 and verse 14. Better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution. What does constitution mean? A person's physical strength and physical health. Your physical health and strength is the, what the word constitution means. Let's read it again. Better is the poor being sound and strong of constitution than a rich man that is afflicted in his body. Health and good estate of body are above all gold and a strong body above infinite wealth. There is no riches above a sound body and no joy above the joy of the heart. You see that? Do you understand what that is saying? You, we, I'll say, I won't say you, I'll say we. We have to burn the fat. We have to burn the fat. We have to deal with whatever underlying uh, uh, ailments we have. We have to take care of it. We must eat better. We must exercise. Listen, the second wave is coming. You would be an idiot whether male or female, for you to hear this, then go back. Oh, I'm just going to sit around the house, eat my chicken wings, eat my chitlins, not exercise. I'm going to do whatever. I'm going to go against what the scriptures say. You simple as hell. You dumb as hell. Okay? Change your eating habits. Okay? 38. Sirach 38 and verse 4. Watch this. The Lord has created medicines out of the earth, and he that is wise will not abhor it. Abhor it, meaning hate it. What is the medicines out of the earth? Herbs. We have to, our lives must, our bodies must, um, we must consume herbs, like Genesis 129, like from the beginning. We Brothers, sisters, I know we love chicken. I love chicken too. I know you love beef, steak. We got to cut that out just for a moment. Just for a moment, cut back on it. Eat it very little. If you're going to eat it, eat it very, very little. And I mean very little. We must eat more herbs, more greens. We have to exercise. Okay? The drinks we drink. Now, on, during the Sabbath class, what was the name of the class? Uh, Battle Against Spiritual Wickedness. And at the end, I go into... Brothers sent me, brothers and sisters sent me various herbs, concoctions for, for y'all to read. I showed many articles. Look at the video. Just take a look at it, all right? We would be foolish not to take care of our bodies. This, our spirit is housed in these physical bodies. Our physical bodies must be strong, okay? To help ward off whatever plagues or pestilences are coming. Now, how can a white man predict such a thing? He's, they're not prophets, but they are the physical counterpart of the spiritual demon, Satan. I'm gonna say it again. How can a white man predict such things? They are not prophets. They are the physical counterpart of the spiritual demon, Satan. I didn't study either. They are the children of Satan. Just like we are the children of God, you, us Israelites, they are the children of Satan. Watch this, Revelation 12. I know you, right now some of you Christians are offended right now. Some of you might have married some of them. You guys, you just love them so much. Now, I'm not saying that it's not some that might do nice things. There are some that might do nice things. But when you read in the Bible, it says regarding him that his wickedness is like rust on iron. 
You might not see it today, but surely as iron rusteth, so is his wickedness. Meaning, it looks iron looks strong today. It's good. But give it time. The rust will start to appear on the iron. Give it time. So God is saying about Esau, Edom, because that's who they are. Give them time. And they may be nice today, but give them time. The wickedness will start to appear upon them. Oh, I can only give you what the Bible says. Now watch this. Revelation 12, verse 12. Therefore rejoice ye heavens and ye that dwell in them. Woe to the inhabitants of the earth. That's us, that's you and me. And of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. Why? Because he knoweth that he hath but a short time. Wow. Wow. Watch this. 13. And when a dragon saw that he was cast unto the earth, when Satan saw his time was up, when the white man sees his time is up, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. Who's the woman? The 12 tribes of Israel. It's a metaphor. Now, that's what I can give you. Now watch this. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. Watch this. Watch this. Watch this. I know some of you mad, but Christ said in Matthew uh, 11, verse 6, Blessed is he whosoever is not offended in me. Is it right? Did I give it right? Matthew 11, verse 6. If I'm not, y'all just type it in. Type it in the, in the thing. In the comment section. Now, where am I going? Oh, I said 2 Thessalonians. The heck is wrong with me? 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. We're going to read verse 8 and 9. And then shall that wicked be revealed. Now, who's that wicked? A lot of you in Christianity, you think that that wicked is talking about one guy. That is it Bill Gates? Remember back in the day, a lot of you were saying, oh, it's Ronald Reagan. Check Ronald Reagan's hair for 666. Listen, that's Christian, Christian or Greek mythology. Stop it. The Bible, when, it talks, when the Bible talks about that wicked, it's not, not talking about one individual on the earth. It's talking about a race of men and women. Can I prove who that wicked is? Come with me. For precept must be upon precept. Let's go to Malachi. Malachi. Now, I know some of you know this already before, but it's good. Repetition is good. The Bible is very repetitive. Watch this. Malachi, come on, come on. Last book of the New Testament. I don't know where I'm flipping to. Somebody pray for me. Malachi chapter one. I'm going to start at verse two. I'm going to just read that. I have loved you, saith the Lord. Yet ye say, wherein hast thou loved us? That's what y'all say. Was not Esau Jacob's brother, saith the Lord? Yet I loved Jacob, and I hated Esau, and laid his mountains and his heritage waste for the dragons of the wilderness. That occurred during the dark ages, when black men and women ruled. Watch this. Verse 4. Whereas Edom, remember Esau's name became Edom. When you read Genesis 25, verse 21 to 30. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. When did Edom return and build the desolate places? During the Renaissance era. During the Renaissance era. Okay. That's when it came back. That's what Renaissance means. Rebirth. Rebirth of what? Rebirth of Caucasians in power in the earth. Let's read verse four again. Whereas Edom saith, we are impoverished, but we will return and build the desolate places. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, they shall build, but I will throw down and they shall call them, 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 the border of wickedness. So Edom shall be called the border of wickedness. Is this one guy? And the people, the people, the people, the people. And the people against whom the Lord has indignation forever. Wow. So the wicked is the race of Edom. They are the physical counterparts of the spiritual demon, Satan. Let's go back to 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 8. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. What is the spirit of the Lord's mouth? The Bible, the Holy Bible. And shall destroy with the brightness of his coming. Watch verse 9. Even him 
whose coming is after the working of Satan. The hymn the him here is a race of mankind, talking about the so-called white man. He's the him. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power, with, you can't make this stuff up, with all power and signs and lying wonders. So when, I, when you hear me say that the so-called white man is the physical counterpart of the spiritual demon Satan, I'm only saying it because that's what the Bible is saying. It's the white man who has all power in the earth. And with that power, he brings forth signs, false signs. And with those signs come our lying wonders. So this coronavirus, it was patented by Europeans 2004. I showed y'all that. You can Google it. Okay, you can check it out. God allowed this white man to come up with this disease that he has patented and let it loose on us. And it is striking black and Latino people, Native American Indians like no other disease ever had. So let me show you what I found in this, this Bible dictionary. Watch this. This is Dr. William Smith's Dictionary of the Bible. All right. Let's see the name. See the cover. All right. Now I'm going to Obadiah. I'm looking up the name Obadiah. Y'all know Obadiah deals with the destruction of the Edomites. I want y'all to see this particular paragraph, right? Yeah. We're going to start right here where it says the book. The book of Obadiah is a favorite study of the modern Jews. Modern Jews, you know, so-called white people. It is here, especially, that they read the future fate of their own nation and of the Christians. Wait a minute, wait a minute. So this is saying that the modern Jews know that they are the Edomites, children of Esau, as recorded in the book of Obadiah. I want to read it again. The book of Obadiah is a favorite study of the modern Jews. Those are the same people, the white people that's in Israel today and scattered all through America, running the media, it is here especially that they read the future fate of their own nation and of the Christians. So the modern Jews and the Christians are Edomites. Obadiah des describes the destruction of Edom, the children of Esau. That's what it deals with. So the, so the Christians, the white Christians, modern Jews, these are Esau, Edom. Those unversed in their literature may wonder where the Christians are found in the book of Obadiah. Because you don't read the word Christians in there. But it is, a fi it is a fixed principle of rabbinical interpretation that by Edomites is prophetically meant Christians and that by Edom is meant Rome. Do y'all see that? Do you I ended right here where it says Rome. Wow. So y'all read it for yourselves. The so-called white man, their scholars know that so-called Jewish people and these white Christians, they are Esau Edom. They are Esau Edom. So now let's go to the shout outs. I got three letters right here. Three letters, three letters. One got a sticky on it. Let me start with the little one first. It reads, Shalom Bishop Nathaniel, all praises to the most high God. I thank you and all the brothers for the work they are doing. Keep up the good work, you guys. Keep up the good work. You guys are all we got. Stay in the spirit. Shalom. Brother E. This is from Brother E. Keep doing 15 minutes with the captain. Straight to the point. All praises. So you captains heard that. Y'all got kudos. All praises. This one is from Reginald and Kathleen C. We have learned a lot from the classes online. Pray for us as we continue to get our house in order. P.S. Thank you for all you do. Most high in Christ bless you all. All praises. Thank you, uh, Brother Reginald and Sister Kathleen. Thank you so much. This is from our Sister Avaya in the D.C. camp. Shalom leadership. I am paying blankety blank for alms and blankety blank towards the booster club. Wish I could give more. All praises, Sister. We thank you for whatever you can give. There's no little, no, there's no amount too small or too great. All praises to the Lord. Well, I'll say this. If the two, there is a month that is too great. And if that means taking your savings, there was a sister that wanted to do that. No, no, no. 
Don't do that because you have to survive in this kingdom. Um, let's get to the donations, all praises. I want to give a shout out to Charles L. Thank you, Charles. Charles L. again, thank you. I want to give another shout out to Kathleen and Reginald C. All praises, thank you. Dave and Katrina P., thank you so much. Palalila, Israel, thank you. All praises. Uh, Ke uh, C. Kemp, thank you so much. Uh, Brother E., Brother E., thank you so much. Damien and Antoinette R., thank you so much. Uh, Charlie W. Jr., thank you so much. All praises. Sheila K. and Jada R., thank you. All praises. Sheila K. and Jada R., thank you again. All praises. Um, Ernest G., thank you so much, Ernest G. Uh, Pamela, I think that's an A for your last name. Might be a C. But Pamela, thank you so much. All praises. And I want to thank, I want to thank Linda S. Thank you, Linda. And Samuel E., thank you so much. All praises to the Lord. I pray that you brothers and sisters glean something from today's shout out Tuesday. You know how I say it. Stay faithful, stay focused. But most of all, brothers and sisters, let us all stay in the spirit. Most high in Christ bless you all. Shalom. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.